Supervillains are awesome. I think we can all agree pretty unilaterally on that one. We all have our favourites, sure, and our own reasons for them being our favourites, but regardless of which is yours, there's just something so compelling about them. It's a shame then that Hollywood so often can't get them right, or even when they do get them right, the rest of the film they're in falls far behind them. So with that in mind, I'm Josh from WhatCulture.com and these are 10 amazing villains wasted in terrible superhero movies. Number 10, Mr. Freeze. Batman and Robin. Joel Schumacher's high camp flop of Batman and Robin was definitely overhated to a considerable degree when it came out, but that doesn't make the movie some kind of secret masterpiece. The film just flat out doesn't work, and even when it does have a good idea, it often fails the execution. Case in point, Schumacher's genuinely inspired decision to adapt the Batman the Animated Series version of Victor Freeze for the movie. Casting Arnold Schwarzenegger, a decision more likely made by Warner Brothers to be fair to Schumacher, was the first misstep, though to his credit he does his best like always. And although the movie nails the haunting imagery of Nora Free suspended in ice, such an image immediately following Arnold dancing around in a bathrobe and slippers to the song of Snow Miser just doesn't really work. Mr. Freeze, especially the one made popular by Batman the Animated Series, is an awesome idea for a comic book movie villain. So maybe when WB finally stops wanting to reboot their movies over and over every two years, we'll see a proper adaptation of him. Number 9, Riot and Carnage, Venom and Venom 2. Having a symbiote as the bad guy in your comic book movie is always a recipe for fun, due to how wild and varied their power sets are and how dangerous they can be. And if your protagonist is also a symbiote, well, that's even better. So, why didn't this work here? Well, simply put, because Venom 1 is not a very good movie. And so while one of the few bright spots is the surprisingly nuanced relationship between Eddie and his symbiote, the same courtesy is not extended towards Riot and his host, whose name I can't even remember, so let's just call him the Riz Ahmed Businessman. In a better movie, the two opposing symbiote relationships would have made for an excellent thematic undertone, as is the case in Venom 2, which I'll get to in a second, contrasting Venom and Riot's relationships with their host as a healthy versus unhealthy bond. As for Carnage, while Venom 2 is a better film, the issue here is that he was just wasted too soon. You don't want to see a villain overstay their welcome, but with Cletus Cassidy killed at the end of the sequel, it kind of feels like more could have been done. Carnage never really got the chance to cause much, well, carnage in the movie, and it sucks to see such a formidable foe dispatched as the franchise swiftly moves onto the next thing. Number 8, The Lizard, The Amazing Spider-Man. With big superhero properties like Spider-Man, there's a tendency to only really play the hits as it were, especially when it comes to the villains of the piece. Just look to any Superman film for proof of this. But to Mark Webb's credit, he did lead his Spider-Man films off with a villain that no one that didn't read comics had ever seen before. That was of course Dr. Kirk Connors and the Lizard. Sadly, that's all the credit he gets because like the rest of the film, this version of the Lizard falls flat on its weirdly for a lizard, flat face. The Lizard is one of the most complicated villains in the Spidey Rogues gallery. A good man, a friend and mentor to Peter even, turned into a vicious beast by trying to bend nature to his whims. And while the origin is still there here, the character of Dr. Connors in this movie is so bland and forgettable that you can't really bring yourself to feel sorry for him. The fact that they removed his family from the adaptation might have something to do with that, though if nothing else it did spare us the horror of the film trying to be a little bit too much like the comics. And while I'm on, for all the good that No Way Home did, one of its few drawbacks was that it made the lizard somehow even more one-dimensional. Number 7, Galactus, Fantastic Four, Rise of the Silver Surfer. Galactus is one of the greatest, most imposing villains in all of comic history. A cosmic god that stands above petty mortal ideas like good or evil, and instead exists only to sate his endless hunger for planets. Clad in purple armor, standing as tall as entire skyscrapers, and speaking with an intellect that demonstrates his vast lifespan, this villain would turn any comic book movie he appears in into an instant classic. Well, or so we thought. Instead, the sequel to the reviled early 2000s Fantastic Four movie chose to depict Galactus as a mindless cloud of space dust that consumes planets whole. No trace of the brilliant design of Jack Kirby, this movie clearly thought it would be taken far more seriously if it portrayed Galactus as a planet-sized hurricane. A hurricane 
in space. It was a complete waste of one of the great epic villains in comic history by a studio and filmmaker who clearly held less than zero respect for what they were adapting. Number 6. Cheetah Wonder Woman 1984 while the first movie's deep cut use of obscure villain Dr. Poison was ingenious, the sequel to Wonder Woman really needed to show off Wonder Woman's more classic baddies, and Cheetah was an absolutely brilliant choice, but that's where the compliments end. Fortunately, the problems with Cheetah don't extend further than just not having a lot going on besides her sick design, which, frankly, has always been a problem with the character in the comics, so it's not like this is some great adaptation sin. But Cheetah has promise, and it's all squandered in this flick. So let's hope Cheetah will get the second chance she deserves in the DCEU's future. Number 5. Doomsday Batman v Superman When it comes to Superman villains, one of the rogues you kinda have to use eventually is Doomsday. You have no real choice in the matter. Whatever your thoughts on the villain as an actual character are aside, there's no doubt that him showing up should be the most important thing in any movie's narrative that features him. Which makes it suck all the more that Doomsday's first live action debut was the battle royale of plot threads that was Batman v Superman. When your climax is the death of Superman, having proper build up is one of those things you just kinda have to get right. But since there are a million things happening in BVS every single second, he just gets lost in the shuffle. The fight between Superman and Doomsday should have been won for the ages, but it utterly wastes even that potential. Maybe next time around they'll realise that when a character exists simply to bring about the end of the most powerful superhero there is, maybe, just maybe, that should be the focus of the whole movie. Number 4. Malekith the Accursed Thor The Dark World The Thor rogues gallery has never been one of the most interesting out there. Even Loki, as we know him now, was vastly different from what the comics at the time portrayed him as. Malekith the Accursed though at least stood out from the rest by not being from actual mythology, and therefore could stand apart from the myths and legends that inspire and in many ways bind the other Thor characters. There are indeed tons of cool places that you could go with this dude, but instead he ended up in Thor The Dark World, the only MCU movie that is universally agreed to just not be up to snuff. An epic villain given to the perfect actor to play him is rendered one of the most forgettable presences in comic book movie history. And when your setup is just all powerful elf wizard who wants to drown the universe in a never ending darkness, the last thing your audience should take away from the experience is forgettable. Number 3. Doctor Doom Fantastic Four there are three adaptations of Doctor Doom thus far, and frankly, any of them would have fit here, but at least the previous two got the look down. What this movie did with Doctor Doom though is really the epitome of everything wrong with Fantastic as a whole. It has basically zero respect for the property as a concept, yet has nothing to actually add to replace what was cut. So instead of a man who grafts a metal mask to himself and becomes an all-powerful tech wizard, we have a guy who looks like he wrapped himself in tinfoil, got some green paint on him afterward, and then started killing people for basically no reason. He is then swiftly killed off, as if the film itself is rightly embarrassed with what it did to Victor Von Doom. Just like, what an absolute waste of a brilliant character and villain. Number 2. Rhino The Amazing Spider-Man 2 While the first Amazing Spider-Man was underwhelming but kinda harmless, Amazing Spider-Man 2 is one of the worst blockbuster films ever made. A film with way too many characters, story beats, and future film setups stuffed into it so utterly slapdashly that even BVS looks like Spider-Verse in comparison. There are three villains I could have put here that appear in this movie, but at least the Green Goblin was done wonderfully before in the Raimi films, and Electro got a genuinely incredible action sequence in Times Square in this movie. So that just leaves Rhino and oh my god Rhino, the things they did to you. Now, admittedly, Rhino has always been at least a bit of a punchline in the comics, but several writers over the years have taken strides to expand on this character and make him genuinely lovable. Amazing Spider-Man 2, meanwhile, just made him Paul Giamatti in a giant robot suit. And boy howdy does it say a lot about the quality of this movie that it has Paul Giamatti piloting a mech suit and they somehow managed to even screw that up. Number 1. Apocalypse X-Men Apocalypse 
Fans waited years to see Apocalypse make his appearance in the X-Men franchise. So, when it was announced that he was going to be the star of the follow-up to Days of Future Past, a crossover movie that rejuvenated the franchise, everyone was optimistic. That optimism skyrocketed when it was announced that he was going to be played by none other than great actor slash the internet's favourite boyfriend, Oscar Isaac. Unfortunately, in the end result, you'd be forgiven for forgetting that it was even Isaac under all of those prosthetics in the first place. Heavy so they were, they completely suffocated the actor's performance, which with a naff script left both the character and actor completely wasted. The world-ending stakes of this X-Men movie should have set it apart, but instead, they made it feel generic, and Apocalypse himself was just a means to an end so the plot could go bigger than before. So that's our list. I want to know what you guys think down in the comments below. What do you think about these superhero villains and their big screen adaptations? While well, you're down there as well, can you also give us a like, share, subscribe and head over to whatculture.com for more lists and news like this every single day. Even if you don't though, I've been Josh. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you soon.